Okay, here's our next awesome problem. Um, and I, I gave this one to you. Uh, it's actually from the book. And so it's a mass, uh, a cart mass connected to a spring with no friction so it can oscillate back and forth. But then there's a pendulum hanging underneath it. So it's kind of like a mass on a spring plus awesome. Uh, so the, the problem kind of already cheats. It skips the first step. How do you find the degrees of freedom? There's two and it actually gives you the coordinates. It says x and theta are these two coordinates. But I just want to emphasize how you know that they're independent. I mean, this could be really anywhere. You can imagine any situation where this is right here and that's at the same angle, or this right here and that's at a different angle. I mean, all those even could be the initial starting conditions. So you can't say that those are, yes, they, they influence each other, but they're still independent. Um, so you can't just say there's only one degree of freedom. Right, okay. So here I have x. And here I have uh, the angle theta. I have the mass of this card I put as m1, and that one is m2, spring constant k. So you know what comes next? Kinetic energy. OK. So that's, I'm going to call x. I need to find x2 equals x y2 equals. Why? Because I need to find the kinetic energy of this mass. Now, in order to do that, Really, the only way is to find its real x and y coordinates and take the derivatives to find the velocities. So the x2 coordinate is just going to be this coordinate I'll call x plus L, this length right here, which is L sine theta. And we did that with our little jiggle pendulum that we did before. So that's not too new. Now, the, the y component of this one is going to be equal to negative L cosine theta. It doesn't depend on x. So now I can take the derivatives. Uh, that one, x, the derivative is just x dot. I think that's pretty easy. So the derivative x2 dot is going to be x dot plus L cosine theta. And then here's the part that you mess up on. You also have to take the derivative of the inside of that so you get a theta dot. Right? Yeah, I know you're going to make that mistake. OK, now over here I get y2 dot equals L sine theta, theta dot. Now I need to square those because I need the kinetic energy. x2 dot squared is going to be x dot squared plus 2L x dot theta dot cosine theta plus L squared, theta dot squared, cosine squared theta. y2 dot squared is l squared. Oh, let me write this the same way, the theta dot in front. Sine squared theta. OK, for my kinetic energy term, I have t equals 1 half m1 x, I'm just calling that x, x dot squared plus 1 half m2 x2 dot squared plus y2 dot squared. So I'm adding these two together and you can see I have an l squared theta dot squared sine squared theta and an l dot l squared theta dot squared cosine theta squared theta. These factor out and I get sine squared plus cosine is 1. Okay, so I'm going to utilize that when I write down my kinetic energy. T equals 1 half m1 x1 dot, no, x dot squared. I'm just calling that x because there's no other x after I get rid of these other things. Plus 1 half m2, now I get this term, x dot squared plus 2L x dot theta dot cosine theta. And then I have these two terms where this the L squared theta dot squared factors out. L squared theta dot squared. And that's my kinetic energy. That's not too bad. And yeah, I, I'm going fast, right? Because that's what I do. Uh, but you pause, you know, pause right here. 
and go back and calculate, make sure I didn't make a mistake, because I definitely could have. Go ahead and do the next step, and don't play it until you do the next step. That's how you can make these videos useful. Just watching me and over and over and over again, you just get tired of looking at the back of my head, and I get tired of looking at the back of my head. Okay, so, there, you paused. Uh, so now I need to find the potential energy. Uh, so, again, let's write this in terms of normal coordinates, and then we can transfer over. So this is just going to be equal to uh, m neg m2 g y2. That's the, if I call this y equals zero, then that's my potential energy. And you can pick wherever you want to have y equals zero, because you're going to be taking derivatives, so it, it doesn't really, it only matters about how things change. So pick it where it's easiest. So I'm going to pick the gravitational potential of zero right here. So y2 is a negative value, so that's a negative potential. But I also have spring potential energy, so that's going to be one half k x squared. And then so we can just write this in terms of our normal variables. Y2 is negative L cosine theta, so I get negative m 2 g L cosine theta plus one half k x squared. And then so L is T minus U. I guess I should write that out or I'll make a mistake. Okay, so let's write that out. One half M1 X dot squared. I'm gonna run out of room. I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay, so one half m1 x dot squared, one half m2 x2 dot squared. Well, that could cancel. Well, let's just, let's just go on. Plus x, I could simplify. Theta dot, this is where I make a mistake. And then I have minus u. So it's going to be minus, it's going to be plus m2 g l cosine data minus one half k x squared. Okay. Now I have two variables. Okay. It's still recording because the last time I had to stop recording and I got really mad. Um, I have two variables. So I'm going to have two Euler-Lagrange equations. Let's do the first one. So it says the partial of L with respect to X minus D D T partial of L with respect to X dot equals zero. So partial of L with respect to X equals. There is an X term in here. This is a little weird because normally we don't have that. There's no X, no X, no X, no X, no X. Boom, right there. So I get negative K X. Right, because if I take the derivative, the partial of this with respect to X, the two comes down. I have kx. That's right. Now, the partial of L with respect to x dot equals, and I'll leave a space here so I can cheat. Okay, so I get uh, m1x dot and then right here I get another, I get m2x dot and then I get one half m, the one half cancels with that. So I get m2l, the x dot just goes away. So let's see, m2l theta dot cosine theta. Remember, it's a partial with respect to x dot. And then there's no other x dots in there. Now I need to take the derivative, not the partial, with respect to time. Okay, so I get, this one's easy, m1 x double dot plus m2 x double dot plus, now right here, I'm going to get m2 l theta double dot cosine theta. 
That's right. I have to still do the product roll. I'm not done. Okay, good. I, I did that because you, you made a mistake. That's fine. You realize I was a student and I made mistakes too. I still do. Okay, so now I took the derivative of that, but I also have to take the derivative of that. So I get Oh, that's going to be minus. And then I have to take the derivative of the inside. So I get a theta dot times theta dot is theta dot squared. Okay. So I'm going to... So this minus this equals zero, or this equals the negative of that. So let's just write that out as... Um, and I'm going to factor out some stuff here. So I'm going to say x double dot times m1 plus m2 plus m2 l theta double dot cosine theta minus m2 l theta dot squared sine theta equals kx. I'm going to leave it like that. But that is one of my quote equations of emotion which are, uh, are true, right, because it's a differential equation with two variables. I have x double dot, I have theta double dot, I have theta, I have theta dot, I have x. So that's a little crazy. Okay. Okay. So now we need to do the theta equation. I'm just going to take this and put theta, theta dot. Okay, so the partial of L with respect to theta, here's, here's one, okay. I have to take the partial of that with respect to theta. So I'm going to get this is equal to uh, M2 L X dot, the theta, I'm not taking the partial with respect to theta dot, just theta, theta dot, and then I have the derivative of cosine theta, which is sine, negative sine. And that's it. There's no theta dot because I'm taking the partial with respect to theta. If I take the partial, then I have to take the partial of theta with respect to theta, which is one. I know that sounds weird, but it's true. And then here I have another one down here. I have a uh, minus m2 g l sine theta. That's it. And that's a little weird. Okay, no, it's not weird. Okay, that's, we should check the units. Meters, meters per second, meters per second squared. It says meters squared per second squared. And that's, okay, that's true. Okay, we're okay. Okay, now the partial of L with respect to theta dot. Please say this is still recording. Yes. Okay, theta dot. Here's one right here. So I get M2, the twos cancel, L, X dot, cosine theta. And then the next one is, I get the two comes down and cancels that one half. So I get plus M2 L squared theta dot. That's it. Okay, so now I take the derivative of both sides. And I get, okay, M2L x double dot cosine theta. Now I take the derivative of that part, and I get M2L x dot sine theta negative theta dot, and then after that one, it's going to be m2 l squared theta double dot. Okay, so now this is equal to the negative of that, so let me write that down, and I get m2 l x double dot cosine theta minus m2 l x dot theta dot, 
sine theta plus m2 l squared theta double dot equals, okay, this is m2 l, can't factors out, the sine theta factors out, m2 l sine theta, and then I get x dot theta dot g, is that right? X dot in meters per second. That's right. Okay. If I didn't make an error, I have another difference equation with two variables in it. Okay. This is where I'm going to stop. But you don't have to. Because there's a couple ways you could solve this problem. One, you could solve this one for, let's say, uh, x double dot, plug it in up here, and then get an equation for just theta double dot. But really what I would do is solve this one for theta double dot, solve that one for x double dot, and then do a numerical calculation where I, once I have theta dots and double dots and x double dots, I can solve for everything numerically. Okay, that's what I would do. But again, this is where I'd say equation of motion is done, physics is done, we just need to solve these two equations. That was long.